Hello friends, it's me yet again. Uh, yeah, on this episode I'll be featuring my uh, second attempt, um, or my second version of a null magnet motor based on the works of Howard Johnson. And uh, yeah, with this particular uh, version, I made it um, using a 3D printer. I I bought a 3D printer, and uh, this is the uh, Ender 5 Plus. And um, yeah, uh, what I did is I I made um, basically a quarter quarter circle um, piece. And then I just uh, printed it out um, four times, and the the quarter circle piece um, interconnects uh, with the other pieces. And so, um, if I can just show you here, the ends interconnect. Uh, these slots um, hold the magnets. I'll show you. See, uh, these are the magnets here. They're half inch cubes. And uh, they slide into these slots. Actually, um, this one here, I didn't finish printing. Like I paused it. And then what happened was the bed, the bed, the bed of the printer um, cooled down. And uh, this thing like basically popped off of the bed and once that happens um, you're screwed like you can't you can't start again because um, the head of the printer is going to start moving the piece around and it turns into a nightmare so yeah you can see how it um, how they uh, slide into the, uh, the piece and um, yeah this was an earlier attempt that also was aborted because this piece popped off the bed because um, the printer has like an, a feature. It has a feature where the bed um, stops heating after about half an hour. And so I had to uh, override that feature. And uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. There, there was a lot of bugs to work out with that printer, but I, I worked them all out eventually. So here it is, it doesn't work. Wow, look at that. The um, the inner pieces I also fabricated with the printer. That pyramid there um, has, um, has a hole in it, a shaft. Um, actually, oh, maybe not. It's movable, everything's movable. It's a little bit sloppily uh, constructed, like the shaft kind of balances a little bit but um yeah I've tried different configurations uh, and nothing's worked so um, what I've come to realize is that uh, this system might be um, incorrect like having a continuous uh, ring of magnets might not actually be the way to go like uh, you might need um, an imbalance within the system so that the magnets are always sort of chasing uh, equilibrium but are never able to achieve that due to a perpetually uh, moving imbalance and so let me just let me show you uh, what somebody else has done here. Um, now this video is on YouTube. This guy has a very similar uh, setup. Um, see, now his works, at least supposedly. I mean, you can. Uh, you can check this out yourself if you want. Um, 
this guy here let me just pause it this is uh, life hacks so yeah the thing to like recognize with his uh, system uh, is that he's not he doesn't have a continuous uh, ring like he split it in half if, if you look at this thing uh, you know the the system is sort of um, it's not a continuous uh, set of fields they've been split into two so you know the the larger magnetic field might be flip-flopping as the wheel turns and that in turn is causing um, a kind of uh, imbalance a perpetually um, non-reachable imbalance that allows the the uh, disc to continue um, chasing the imbalance. So, you know, that might be my mistake. I might have, uh, you know, I maybe should have modeled this, you know, what this guy has done instead. So that's in fact what I probably will do because since my, um, since my thing can be taken apart, like at these uh, quarter, quarter, uh, quarter pieces or whatever you want to call them, I can just take off half of it and then build another, like a new one that'll be smaller and it'll go on the inside. Like, just like that guy's one. Uh, if you know what I mean. And then hopefully it'll work. And, uh, you know, I'll tinker with different um, positions, like, you know, right now. Um, right now I've got it sort of, these magnets facing um, at uh, a certain angle. Um, you know, so, I don't know, I have a lot of different ideas of what I could do, I mean, It'd be ideal if I could have something um, that could move these magnets, like a kind of a flexible setup or a flexible rig where I could change the angles and change the positions, but not have to fabricate an entirely new arm every time, like have um, you know these magnets uh, sitting on some kind of, it's like some screws that I could um, move the thing with or, or whatever, you know just to save time, like set up something that is more flexible so it can be changed. You know, you can constantly tinker with things and and screw around and hopefully um, get it right. So that's one idea. Um, you know, there are other ideas like, you know, possibly, um, you know, doing, um, creating uh, Howard Johnson's, like his actual pat patent the one that's in the 1980 uh, science or science magazine or whatever that was creating that thing uh, you know I mean if you search the internet there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different um, ways you can do this uh, you know magnetic fields are um, like there's just so many different ways you can create um, magnet motors you know the possibilities are endless because people don't actually understand what they're doing like they're just well they sort of do but they don't um, since we can't perceive of magnetic fields directly humans are kind of in the dark on what's going on so we're extrapolating uh, the missing data through experimental um, information you know different experiments and whatever our technology can show us that of uh, what magnetic uh, fields really are so there's a lot of guesswork and a lot of trial and error and different inventors are trying different systems like different ways of positioning magnets uh, to get them to to self uh, revolve and whatnot but um, you know and there and I applaud all of them but you know there's uh, a certain magical um, proportion proportionality that has to be uh, maintained in order to get the fields to, to lock and to start um, to perpetually move like there's uh, 
you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't have the secrets. Like, if I could see magnetic fields, I would definitely know what I'm doing. But uh, I, unfortunately, I'm not I'm one of those people. But they do exist, and that's why some people are so much more ahead of the game. Uh, but yeah, um, anyways, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the 3D printer has been a great advantage because now I can just design stuff on my computer and just print it up and it saves a lot of time and I can make uh, precision uh, components very easily now. Uh, I'm using Blender, the open source free uh, computer animation software program. And uh, from there I create uh, STL files and then I use um, a slicer program to convert the STL file to a different file type that the printer can use. And I have to say that with the, um, the, Ender, um, the Ender printer, um, they supplied a slicer program, but it was a PC based program. Uh, so I just downloaded a free um, slicer program um, an Apple based one and um, yeah uh, the printer is good but um, you know it's kind of I don't know it it's very finicky and I had to really screw around um, with it like the, the self-leveling feature doesn't seem to work so I had to manually configure it and you have to like reset it almost like every time you print something but still it's still like a great tool it's something that can accelerate my own uh, creative potential, uh, you know, tenfold or something like that. And so, you know, I'm grateful that I have it now and that I'm not screwing around with balsa wood and a glue gun like I was um, in previous years. But yeah, uh, I will be posting more videos of these uh, Magnum motors and uh, hopefully I'll succeed eventually. And uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye for now.